Jets class, and we are now welcoming on a very, very special guest. It is Hoodie Allen. Dude, thank you so much for taking the time uh, and talking to us for a little bit here. Yeah, happy to be here, man. I'm I'm at my most pessimistic as a Jets fan. I can't <laughs> wait to vent for as long as you'll have me. And um, yeah, thanks thanks for thanks for bringing me on. I feel like that's like status quo. Like for a Jet fan, that is that is baseline emotion. And then every now and then you get the random outliers of feeling really really good. Uh, so before we do get to the Jets, though, I I, I found you back when I was in college. We're around the same age, uh, probably right when you really broke out. But reading a little bit more about your backstory. Graduate of UPenn, working at Google, and then boom, you get into the rap game. So can you just take me through like having that situation where it seems like it's a pretty stable, normal life you're about to live to then going into this, this hysteria that is being a music star? Yeah, absolutely. I, my path is definitely a little bit unique, um, but I've been doing music sort of my whole life growing up. It's been the thing that's most important to me. My parents kind of were like, stay being sensible. I, I went to Penn. I even played sprint football at Penn. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's basically... No, uh, I wanted to ask you about that too. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's lightweight football. I'm a small guy, okay. but I got a lot of heart. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> so yeah, I uh, played a little bit of football at Penn, graduated, went to Google. But that whole time as I was, as I was getting close to graduation, the music stuff was starting to finally happen. Like people were listening who weren't directly uh, having the same last name as me, which was an improvement mm -hmm. in my listener base. And yeah, I just kind of rode the opportunities as they as they came. And it was, uh, yeah, it's one of those like, you know, five years overnight stories. So how, so when did you, and how did you decide to make the jump? Because again, like I imagine, it's a, you, you were on the path for something really stable. You were gonna make a nice living for yourself, have a career, the family, all that, just a normal, normal life. And then to go, I want to make this change. Was it, you, like you said, you started to have something pop off and then when was it that you made the jump of like, you know what, we're going to put this off to the side. I'm going into this field completely. Yeah. So, I mean, the first day that I actually moved to San Francisco to work at Google, mm -hmm. I uh, got a call from a few record labels okay. and I thought, oh, this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a record deal. This whole traditional job is not going to work. That process ended up flopping right in my face. It, I didn't get a deal. Those, those meetings didn't go well, but it sort of set the, that fire inside of me that said, I, you know, I can do this. Other people are starting to see what I'm doing as something worthy of their time. This is worth mm -hmm. my time. Let me really sort of burn the fire at both ends. So while I was working at Google, I started to really invest all my other free time, fully, fully immerse myself into the music stuff. And you, Within you know five months, I kind of hit that crossroads where it was like I can't keep doing both. I got to make a choice. Yeah, and um, yeah, with a little bit of trepidation and fear, I sort of said, "Get like give me this year, fully focused yeah. year to see what happens." And that was the year that I put out uh, All American, which you mentioned, and I kind of uh, never looked back from there. Was there like All American comes out, and that's when I caught you, like, and, and that's yeah. when I feel like you you blew up. Did you know you had something really special there or was it almost like, let's throw it out there, see what happens. And then you were almost overwhelmed by the reaction uh, and the reception to that. Well, I, it's, it's so hard to know, but I, I was definitely overwhelmed by the reaction. I can tell you that I was 23 years old. I had never mm -hmm. sold music before. You know, everything was on the internet. It's free, download it. It was just, just trying to like, you know, gain a fan base. So that was the first time I ever said, hey, people who I think are listening, can you mm -hmm. can you consider buying something? And I think we did like 30,000 sales that first week, which yeah. uh, went to like number one on iTunes back when people bought music on iTunes and that was a big <laughs> deal. And yeah, I, I just remember that really being a moment because now we see it nowadays, you know, 10 years forward, where there's so many independent musicians who I love who are championing that you can really, there's there's not as much of a ceiling, like you can do anything you want independently. Back then, it was a it was a little bit more rare. And um, yeah, it's, it's sort of the way I've always done it. But it was it was really cool to sort of be on the early part of trying to champion the like independent way of doing things. Yeah. And then how much have you changed? Because how much have you seen your style and and the way you put it out, like your your voice, I guess, how has it changed from from that one to where you are now? Or is have you kind of yeah. tried to stay stay same or have you evolved? Like as you've gotten, like you said, you're 23 then, you're older yeah. now, your life changes, your experiences change. I mean, how, how much did you adjust? 
you know, I, I always, I, I've never been someone who like lives inside the studio. I think you mm -hmm. got to live your life and sort of the life that you live informs what you want to talk about and, and what you want to share and your feelings and your experiences. So um, obviously as a decade of life has passed, I've had breakup albums and I've had uh, different circumstances that are, you know, up oh, this, this mood is a little bit darker. This is a happy period of mm -hmm. my life. And I try to put that all in, in my music, like kind of when I'm feeling it in the moment. So yeah, as, as I continue living, the sound kind of evolves with it. And um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here and be able to have enough of a name that I can talk about my real passion, which yeah. is the New York Jets. That's, that's always, that always was my goal, low key. That, that's what I was about to ask you. Is I, I assume <laughs> as, your, as your life experiences go up and down, what's the album after the Aaron Rodgers Achilles injury going to sound like? I guess that, that's probably going to be darker than yeah. the breakup album. I, right? I, I was at I was at that game. I, uh, oh, my you were. Came, my brother came in from Los Angeles. We were like, we have to go see this game, uh, oh. regardless. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to ask. You know, I've got, I've got like a few of the people, uh, the lovely people who work over in like the PR section of and mm -hmm. the Jets, and and they'll sometimes like hook it up with tickets. And the hospitality there is amazing, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. But I was like, I'm not asking them. Like this game is is going to be too crazy. Like I just want to go with my brother. I want to like get the best seats yeah. I can. And I've never been in a more deflating slash exciting three hours of my life. That was an absolute whirlwind. Yeah. Um, the New Jersey Transit back was the worst thing of all time, but the the Xavier Gibson punt return was kind of a uh, or kickoff return was was definitely worth it. I mean, you're I know you're you're a diehard diehard. Like that's when when I started realizing like just how intense you are. You have people that like celebrities that are loosely associated with the Jets that will show up every now and then. You you really do bleed green. You're from Long Island, so I mean, yeah. automatically you're in Jets country. Was For the sure. fandom influenced by family? Like, are you just from a, a, I mean, you guys are born and you're bleeding green out of the womb. Like what, how, where did the, the Jets affiliation come from? Was there a moment that kind of captivated you? No, my, my dad is actually a Giants fan. So okay. it, I, I don't, I don't know what this curse, where this Early curse sign of revolting. Um, was that what this was? Yeah, it was just, it was just a little bit of, of young rebellion. No, I don't, I don't know. I think I just. <laughs> You know, like, I think it was just as simple as I like the color green and someone got me a hat yeah. or a jersey. Um, but yeah, as early as I can remember, I was going to the Hofstra training camps back when mm -hmm. back when they were in Hofstra. I missed that. Uh, earliest Jets memories are are going there and like cornering Neil O'Donnell between like mm -hmm. two cars in the parking lot, begging him to take a picture. He didn't want to take pictures. Boomer Esiason was way nicer. Shout out to there Boomer. We, we love Boomer Esiason uh, forever. And yeah, it's um, and just like I, 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 my fandom goes far. Like I'll be on like the Jets message boards. Like growing up, like the, <laughs> like I don't want to, I don't want to call it the websites, but like I'd be in the message boards, sometimes posting, mostly just viewing, and uh, and now that's like Twitter, right? Now that's Twitter, yeah. and not only are you there, but like the players are there too. It's it's wild. Brees Hall followed me this year on Twitter. I don't know why. Best follow ever, though. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I think I prefer following. I, I I like finding the random ones that'll have me blocked. That's when we're like, I talk to the guy in the locker room all the time, think we're great, like we're good pals, and I'm like, wait a minute, why is he have me? Like Michael Carter, the running back, not the DB. Yeah. Like randomly, it's like, wait, why do you have me blocked, man? We talk all the time. He goes, oh, don't worry, I just block all the media when the season starts. Like, oh, it made me feel a little bit better. So yeah, you have you're a more contentious, my contentious position. I, I try to keep it nice on on Twitter, you know. Yeah, yeah. That that's probably that's probably true. That's probably true. So I so we're around the same age. So I know, unfortunately, there's probably been a little bit more. Well, I shouldn't even say that because the Herm the Herm years for for the Jets. I mean this this run of struggles that they've had the futility the last 13 years that wasn't normally the case. I mean I I remember the Jets during the the Edwards years, even Mangini for a split second. And then obviously Rex. The the Jets were every other year they were in the playoffs. They weren't Super Bowl teams, but they were pretty good. Like do you have a a run that you remember of being like, man, this was like the prime. Like this was where it was just really fun being a Jets fan. Um, yeah, I, I guess like a couple of different eras stand out in mind to me, like Corbett, Keyshawn, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I mean, that's like, I was probably like 10 or 11. So, I mean, that yeah, was that's really the cool. prime. That's the prime of being a football fan. That's like for me, I remember that being like Jeremy Shockey's early years with the Giants. Like that was of what course. sucked me in. Yep. Yeah, that's that's super formative, like, you know, hometown hero. And, and that team was clicking and and they were fun to watch uh, mm -hmm. in, in many ways. And then, you know, kind of 
um, I guess the next time that they, that excitement sort of is is equal to that is maybe mm-hmm. Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker. Yes. You know the the, the that's Mark Sanchez, right? Um, yep. That that era uh, fits for them, and then the right before that was Sanchez. Oh yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just when we got to the playoffs a few times, and remember uh, the missed Doug Bryan field goal that that yep. ruined it all. But but you know, like there were it. it it's been so long since I've remembered like what an mm-hmm. offense feels like that yeah. that's what I have to sort of look back to. But um, yeah, those are the days where it was really built on the offensive line. And it was mm-hmm. Brick and Mangold and Fanica and whoever was on the right side mm-hmm. next to, I don't remember, but yeah, just, you know, a more grinder effort. But uh, th- that was the last time I think I was happy in life in general. <laughs> yeah. I think, dude, you mentioned Brandon Marshall. Like, to this day, I remember, that was like, so 2015 was, I think, the second year I was on the beat. To this day, I remember standing out there for OTAs and having him walk out. And I don't think I've ever seen a player more physically imposing. Like, to see a dude that big and be like, he's a receiver. Like, he plays receiver. Like, how, like, what safety is going to want to take that on over, say, linebacker? Like, who wants to take, it was one of the craziest. And that team, too, was fun. Like, I remember yeah. that one was Decker. Like, even they had some fun guys in the slot that were coming out there. Like, Chris Wusu was decent for a little bit before the concussions ended. I'm like, that was fun. So do you remember even, like, the years where, like you said, Coles, like, um, uh, before he went to to Washington, like Santana Moss. Like, I remember yeah, him. Like, I remember talking to buddies about him, like, why he was traded. Because, again, I didn't grow up – I'm unlike you. I didn't grow up a Jets fan. So he was one that I was always like, why they let him go? Like, do you remember watching him and thinking the same thing back then? Um, Santana Moss was electric. That was that, yeah, yeah. Him and Coles and, and Kerbet. I mean, that was just great. And Cotri. I mean, there, there's so many guys over the years, like just as a Jets fan that you yeah. just take a liking to. They're just, you know, the, mm-hmm. the affinity in the, in the fandom, but it's tough. I mean, I feel like that's where we're going right now. I, you know, in, in, in getting ready to, to talk to you today, I was thinking about like so much of the, those players, those homegrown players and, yeah. and, I, I don't really watch any team as closely as I watch the Jets. So I yeah. don't know the comparison of like, is this happening to other teams a lot? Like, are they are they losing their players often? But, you know, I know we're like reaching this probably again this offseason with like Bryce Huff. And it, yeah. it always, or, or even when we couldn't keep Jamal Adams, and I think that has, that was a good one. But like at, a, at a, er, the early stages of that, it was like, this is ridiculous. You know, how are we, we yeah. going to let how can we not solve these, these issues from inside? So, yeah, I don't know if that, if, if it's like a word where we have that problem at an average rate in the NFL at a higher than average rate in the NFL, but it definitely hurts when you can't like hold on to a player who, who means a lot to the, to the franchise and the fandom. So do you, do you have a play? This is the last one. We'll talk about the actual state of the team. Yeah. Your fandom growing up, like you, you, everyone, every, every kid who's loved the Jets before, every adult, adult who looks back on that time, there's always like the player that stands out. And usually there's remove the, the famous ones that everyone loves. Like everyone loved Curtis Martin. Everyone loved Chad Pennington, like all that stuff. Do you have one that stuck out to you where you were like, you know, he's maybe not everyone's favorite, but he's just, he's got it. He's got a special place in my heart. Like, I really like this guy. And uh, growing up. Yeah. That's a. I, I mean, I I guess Nick Mangold uh, is is a yeah. is a everyone favorite, but I, I no, that's like, so good. Man. That's a lineman. Give the give the lineman some love. That's a good yeah. One. Let's let, let's give some love to Nick Mangold for sure. Um, also, um, crap. Who, who's I'm, I'm I'm really trying to to dig. I want to dig deep in my bag and get like a yeah. real a real uh, sleeper of a pick. Um, but was it? Am I, am I messing with this? Was this Demario Davis who left and became yeah, an, uh, yeah. a, a linebacker of the Saints at a super high level for a while? Yes. So he was, Demario was with the Jets because I, I remember that was super early when I started covering them. He was like average, like an average linebacker. Left the Jets to go to the Browns. Do you remember, uh, God, who the hell was the safety they had? Was it Calvin Pryor? They oh, traded Calvin, Calvin Pryor. Pryor. I love yeah. Calvin Pryor, yeah. Dude, he was a hell of a quote too. Like to this day, got me one of like the best quotes I've ever had in my career. <laughs> we were sitting there talking to him at training camp, have him one-on-one. And I'm like, man, like, give me your top five safeties. And he's like, you know, Tyron Matthew, like whoever the top five guys were in 2015 that everyone knew. And then he, I was like, well, what makes them great? And he goes, 
takes like this long like pause, like he's like really thinking deep, and he goes, "They've got that it factor," and I'm ready to like go on to my next question. And he goes, "And I've got it too." And I was like, "Whoop! There's my lead. Thank you very much, Calvin. I appreciate that." And then obviously he. <laughs> You know, narrator, like he did not have the it factor because he ended up being very yeah. bad after that one breakout year. But <laughs> Jets, I think, traded him to Cleveland and then got Demario back. Dude was a stud. Like he think yeah. like that year when he came back was when he was suddenly a different linebacker. But they let him go. I give him a little bit of slack for that because you basically had six or seven years of him being very average, one year of him being good, and very rarely do people turn it around. Let him walk, brought in Avery Williams, and of course Avery turned out to be an okay-ish player. But Demario yeah. then, of course, becomes an all-pro. Yeah, la, la, last guy I'll give a shout out to is Braylon Edwards. Yeah, okay. Love yeah, yeah. Braylon Edwards as well. But there yeah, we go. if I prepped it better, I would have had some crazy Kyle Brady. No, Kyle Brady was just okay. Yes. Um, yeah. But yeah, there, there, there are tons of guys, tons of guys who are didn't don't get as much credit as they deserve. No, I always think about that. Like in in when I was a kid, like the player, like you have the ones you love, and then the ones you you randomly think of, like. I used to love Michael Barrow. Like, he was an inside linebacker, just average player, but for whatever reason, I liked him. And I Black, a cool number. He was one of my favorites. So, Shout you're. you're s- yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, the, the, the we'll punter quarterback, right? We'll get, we'll the one who like, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. There you go. I appreciate it. So, where were you? So, current state of the team. Where where are you overall in assessing the Jets? It's the, the Robert Sala, Joe Douglas, potentially swan song going into next year. Uh, with Aaron Rodgers leading it, where where's where's the emotion at for you right now? Um, well, I'll say this is the first time I think in my adult life where I've just decided not to tune in to a few games on the weekends. Yeah, um, uh, like I didn't watch I didn't watch the Patriots game. Um, I didn't watch the week before, and that's and I felt like a, a sense of relief. And like yeah. I hate that. I I really like like I'm sure most of us like love love tuning it. Like you 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 plan your Sunday around it. Like you know you. Yeah. You get you build up all the false hope. You 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 drink the Kool Aid, and then mm-hmm. they were just it was um it was a it was a tough year. It's it's very tough to just hear the we're close, we're close, and mm-hmm. not see the actions match the words. And really, when you take off like the uh, the Jets' glasses to it, it feels like they're like actually they're closer to their actual performance than they are their aspirational performance. Because yeah. I look around, I mean, and the AFC is tough, obviously, but I look around the other teams in the AFC, especially like there are like three or four teams that didn't make the playoffs that are arguably ahead of us. Yeah. And that's scary because I don't see how we're getting better or like, I don't like the arrogance that combines like yeah. the stubborn arrogance. Like I, I just, it makes me, it, it makes me not want to get my hopes up as much going into this next season that this will finally right the ship because by all accounts, like our team could get worse Yeah. Um, from here to there. And we're running back the same staff that wasn't able to make changes mm-hmm. in game that didn't have to sort of be held accountable with anyone's. And I don't want anyone to ever lose their job, but like no job seemed to be, yeah, turning over for things that were lackluster this season. So, like, what can you do to, other than kind of throw your hands up and say, like, I'm always going to be a fan. I'm always going to love this team. But, like, you're not really giving me the reasons for yeah. optimism anymore. Dude, you are. You're definitely into it. Like, you are. You are in the weeds. I appreciate it. Like, it is. Yeah. It, you're you're a diehard, a true, true diehard, uh, especially I, when you're starting to think of that. And also, I appreciate not like, again, the the. I think one of the toughest things is sometimes talking with fans and and it's the, like you said, the green colored glasses where it's like you just, you always believe what the team is doing is the right thing. And it's like, no, you got to kind of step back because sometimes people screw up and sometimes people make mistakes and look at it that way. Is there a move that you could see these guys making that would that would bring you back in? I mean, what's on like your to-do list this offseason that could potentially right the ship or at least suck you back in again? I, I mean, I'm. Let, let's not kid ourselves. I'll, I'll be back in. Like yeah. I'm oh, always back. Yeah. I'll, I'll be fantastic. back in when there's when there's two months of draft coverage that we're that we're sure to get. And you know, it's just I, I think that the part. And I'll sorry to go off topic for a second. The, the part that is a little um, that I wanted to sort of like stop getting so emotionally invested in is the we have to lose to the Patriots so that we get the seventh yes. pick instead of the tenth pick. It's like 
we've gotten we've had what seven first round picks mm-hmm. in the Joe Douglas era. We've gotten tons of hits on those picks too, and tons of misses. It I thinking that there's going to be a hugely different result based on this pick. Like I I, I want the I want the guys who go out there. They don't care about draft picks. They want to go and play yeah. football. Go go let them win. Like I'm just trying not to be invested in the meta game of like what fans obsess yeah. over, but in terms of what they could do going forward, um, gosh, I mean, it, it they could get a, they have, they have to, if, if everything is basically where it was resetting last year, where yeah. Aaron Rodgers is the difference maker, which I have my own sort of more gloomy feelings about what it will look like, even if he is able to be Just out there. Justified, dude, he's 40. He's 40 years old, had injury la- injury last year with his Packers and an injury this year. I mean, it's that's that's a that's an asterisk. Like I, I that's my biggest concern is like you, you talk about this team, everyone's like, oh, everything gets better when Aaron returns. It's like he is a year older and he hasn't really looked like the same Aaron Rodgers for three years now. So I I'm with you on that. Yeah, it's the quiet part that no one wants to say out loud, I mm-hmm. guess. But like this is, you know, like I, I was so happy when we got him. I didn't compare it to the options out there. Compared to Jimmy G, who got benched, compared to Derek Carr, yeah. who got yeah. injured slash benched. I mean, he also stinks, but yeah, 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 yeah for sure. I mean, like it, it is what it is. We got the best quarterback for sure. Yeah, we did. Um, need need to make sure that it, it, he isn't the reason that we give up on another season. I mean, it was really crazy to watch, you know, uh, Burrow go down and the Bengals stayed competitive. The mm-hmm. Dolphins lost tons of offensive linemen. Also, they stayed competitive. Anthony Richardson looked like a star. He went down. They stayed competitive with Gardner Minshew. So mm-hmm. I guess we need a second quarterback, a veteran presence who can run an offense, who can throw for 250 yards, complete 65% of passes. Alien concept. <laughs> to, to Brees Hall, who, who can make, you know, uh, Garrett Wilson be – like like he's a target monster, but even more effective, you know, given some open space yeah. to work in. And um, and yeah, I mean, obviously people are going to say it comes back to offensive line. And I think when we really diagnose what the offensive line slash like cap situation is, mm-hmm. it's I think it's even more scary to think that yeah. the, like there's not there's not one move. There really isn't mm-hmm. one move because, um, you know, Lakin Tomlinson was super available but he underperformed maybe what he gets paid yes. potentially. Makai Becton is, I, I don't know what they're going to do with that, but I feel like he may not be back. So mm-hmm. that's a thing. Um, why am I blanking on the center? Joe. Uh, Tittman. Tittman. Yeah, yeah. Joe Tittman. Um, good. Good. Awesome. Check mark. One of I five. Think. Lockdown. Yeah. We're good to go, baby. Start the point. Elijah Barrett Tucker. Check plus, but coming in with an injury in two straight seasons yeah. of not being able to do 16, 17 games. So that is again scary. And then right tackle. I, I guess I guess we have depth there and we have some options there, but like there's multiple there's multiple that's multiple positions to fill. And I guess that's where like people are gonna say you might lose a guy like Bryce Huff in in, in pursuit of mm-hmm. trying to shore up that line. And that's that does not make the team better, you know? No, I agree. I, th- I think that's probably the biggest thing is, is you can go out there and get a backup quarterback. Like, that's going to happen. They, they could have gone out there this, this past offseason. Jacoby was there. Gardner was there. There's options to go out there, and there'll be options again to go get a backup quarterback who can play. They're going to have options to get a receiver opposite Garrett Wilson. I'm with you. My biggest concern with the team is, is not that they haven't diagnosed that the offensive line is a problem, not that they're not going to try to fix the offensive line, it's that you basically need to find four legitimate pieces in one year. Because like you yeah. said, left tackle, right tackle, you need those. Left guard, yeah, like you said, Lakin's there, but there have been legitimate performance concerns. And with Elijah, he's probably this team's best offensive offensive lineman, one of the top two offensive sure. players, maybe my, overall. I mean, this guy's an all-pro player. He could be the number sure. two offense right behind Garrett, but he's coming off an Achilles. And an offensive lineman has to push off. like that. I have worries about how he's going to perform next year. That's my concern. Is is that can you fix the offensive line? And I don't know if they can. Yeah, it's 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 really tough. And 
if I, I worry, I suppose, about the um, evaluation, you know, like like the skill evaluation, the players that sometimes they do go after or they miss on or, you know, we haven't gotten in the past because we've been too cheap relative to other teams um, like and, and we just figure out, oh, well, just this is our solution. But, you know, who we missed out, we missed out on like Orlando Brown, right? Let's pass mm-hmm. offseason left tackle. And there's a lot of stubbornness. Like, like, I don't, I don't, I think, you know, you start, you kind of have to be a little crazy to think that uh, people who have shown themselves to like conduct business a certain way are suddenly going to be the opposite of that. Like they are who they are. Like most people generally are. And like, uh, like, don't get me wrong, like Joe Douglas hit on so many, like I love Garrett Wilson. I love yeah. Sauce, I love Brees. And I'm I'm like increasingly worried every year when I, uh, like like every day when it's like, we're ruining these guys' rookie contracts mm-hmm. and we don't have we don't have solutions right now. And by the time they're due for a second contract, if we have all if we haven't figured this other stuff out. How how are we not just going to be in this perennial cycle where we can't retain our players? We can't we've we've put we've given contracts to people who maybe didn't deserve it, and now you know what are we doing? Like it's it I don't know. I love I, I in my other world I'd love to be like a capologist. Like that's what I would have yeah. wanted to yep. do. Like like do this sort of thing because I find it fascinating. But but yeah, I it's a lot of problems to fix in one off season, and I'm sure other teams that are competing at a high level don't have five studs on the offensive line, but they figure it out and and they have yeah. they at least had resilience this year that the Jets didn't. And that that part is is worrisome. The the lack of fight that seemed to take place in the middle of the season. All right. Last one for you that I've got. Jets go out there, they add, let's say, first round pick they use it on an offensive lineman, whether it's all or the kid from, I don't think kid from Penn State's gonna be say so Joe Alt's the, the pick there for them. Uh, they are able to steal away from the Raiders for a reasonable draft because I don't think it's going to cost a first or a second rounder next year. Uh, they're able to get um, Devontae Adams. So now you got Devontae Adams. You shore up the offensive line with, we'll say, two new legitimate players. They're keeping Lake and ABTs back. Aaron Rodgers is healthy, and they've got Gardner Minshew backing them up. This weekend, wild card weekend's coming up. Are the Jets playing in wild card weekend, in your opinion? Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're just as good as, as the, in that situation, they're just as likely to be there as the Bengals or the Texans or the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Knicks a little bit. Cause like, it's like, okay, you're, you're good, but you're not better than the top teams yeah. still. Yep. Um, and you know, you're like I think, yep. in a weird way, I would take that. And, and there's, and there's so many position players that are actually studs on this team that are underappreciated. Quincy Williams, DJ Reed, like mm-hmm. we have, we have some guys on, on really team friendly deals. Like they, those are great, great players. Um, even like Jamie Sherry, like just there, there are tons of great players. Al Woods, Quentin Jefferson, like, like yeah. people who, who are really make the, the build of a team that can become a championship team alongside the stars. But, um, but I don't know, you know, like I, I'm even torn on the Demonte Adams thing. If if that was if that was to happen, um, and and that's age? silly to say. worried about the it, age. No, because it's silly to say because like what he he's such an incredible talent and still is. But that is kind of the type of move that, like like an overpay capital wise for that is like yeah. the type of got gotcha. you. Okay. Team, like I don't know, like a teams do, and then they look back and they regret. Like teams, like the Jets have done before, and they look back and regret. And I can't put a I can't put like a, a time machine in place here. But if I could, um, I go back in time to last year's draft. I draft Jackson Smith and Jigba. Mm-hmm. I keep Bryce Huff this off season, and now boom, we can clearly take the best offensive lineman on the board. Yep. Um, or a quarterback, what, whatever. But we know we've got two guys in the wide receiver room, plus. Pretty decent tight ends, great running back. Where it's like that's a, that's an offense. That's a one-two-three offense that that is formidable and is going to grow and get better and is young and on rookie deals. Now, like I don't know, I don't just don't I don't know where we go. Like where we go from here, I don't know. I don't know, man. We're we're gonna have to. I, I know you're. You've got. I'm the a music doer. 
I don't Dude, know you, you've to... already changed careers once. You went from working at Google to music. Maybe the next thing is, is NFL front office. I'm impressed. I like I like your game plan. I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't I don't know if I I don't know if I have a game plan. I I would really you know like at the end of the day like we have so little control over it, right? We just yeah. we we either watching, we're enjoying, we're here for the ride, but um, it's it's. It, it's a it's it's fun it will be fun what, whatever happens but i i'm uh i I've, I've been i've been more optimistic in the past than the last couple of years this is this is i'm, I'm entering my my uh same old jets kind of there you go um, i hear you i it dude it's tough it's 13 years like that that's i, I was talking to my wife the other day and and kind of loosely made a comment and she goes what and she's a diehard eagle <laughs> fan she made a comment to me. She goes, she's like, it's been 13 years. I was like, yeah, 13 years. So it's stunning to even people that don't even follow the Jets. All right, dude, we're going to keep you around for one more segment. We're going to do a little sure. Connor versus with you, if that's cool with you. Yeah, absolutely. And can I say one last thing? 100%. Go. Floor is yours. I, I, I don't even blame Zach Wilson. I'm never, <laughs> I would never put one player as the reason why. If he has a great career elsewhere, fantastic. Thank you to all the BYU supporters who became Jets fans for three years. See you later. I hope he does great. It's all good. I don't even care if it's Robert Sala. I want all these people to succeed. Like, I want them to succeed. Yeah. I'm, I'm like an optimist at heart. But we can't deny the fact that there are other teams that are also in their quote-unquote rebuild. And it's taken them way shorter time. And they're already in the playoffs this season. That's all I'll say. Dude, you're a Jet fan at heart, man. You, you, you want the best, you just expect the worst. It's, it's, I want that's the best, what happens. I expect the worst, and at least I'm not rooting for the Commanders. There you go. There you go. 